Greetings, Sentinels fans. I am Brian the Wolf Hunt, and here is the second Distinguished Cards from Sentinels of the Multiverse Heroes. As I said in the previous video, every single hero has their own unique cards that make them special. And so, I will continue this with a new theme. Today's theme? Sentinels in space! Sentinel Comics has five space-themed heroes, three aliens, and two humans. These characters are Tempest, Captain Cosmic, Skyscraper, Knife, and Lifeline. Let's start with Tempest. Mick Dalton, or Mac Dalton, whatever name you find easier to pronounce, is an alien refugee from Vognelt Prime and has a natural ability to control the weather. Creating this list for him was actually kind of difficult, as he does a lot of different things, but I have settled on a few as representative of the wide scope of his skills. Grievous Hailstorm, Cleansing Downpour, Reclaim from the Deep, Ball Lightning, Flash Flood, and Into the Stratosphere. I know it's a lot, bear with me. Grievous Hailstorm provides an excellent representation of what Tempest does best. Take out the small fry and crowd control. This power is a better version of Tempest's base power, and hits all the bad guys across the board, which is great in team villain mode, or against villains who employ a ton of minions. I'm putting Ball Lightning and Flash Flood in the same slot here, as they both illustrate Tempest's further ability to clear the field, but more in terms of directly destroying ongoing and environment cards respectively. Ball Lightning, in addition to dealing 4 damage, destroys 2 villain ongoing cards, whereas Flash Flood allows you to immediately destroy 2 environment cards. Cleansing Downpour serves the Tempest's best defense tactic. This card provides 2 points of healing to all heroes. Quite likely the only instance of healing, except everything Dr. Medico does, that has the ability to outpace the damage dealt by some of the easier villains. Reclaim from the Deep is one of a select few cards in the whole game that allow both Tempest and other heroes to retrieve a card from the discard. It is essential for getting some really good cards back into play. Into the Stratosphere is a bit of a weird card for its deck, but it is so useful that it bears mentioning. It essentially takes a villain card in play and places it on top of the villain's deck, creating an effective stalling action so you know what they will do on their next turn. It also hits the villain for good measure, because what is insult without a bit of injury? Next up, the Space Dad himself. Here's Captain Cosmic. This spacefaring hero tends to provide the opposite problem to Tempest. I struggled finding cards that really define him, quite possibly because I find it difficult to really play him well. But I do have some idea of what to do. In the end, I went with destructive response and unflagging animation. Captain Cosmic's whole deal involves creating and using constructs, and just as often getting them destroyed, either by the villain dealing damage or Cosmic breaking them himself. Destructive response capitalizes on the destruction by basically having the construct blow up in the villain's face, dealing little bits of damage. It's also useful for activating some of the constructs that require to be damaged, but not destroyed. I'd say Voss will think twice before destroying another construct, but you know he will blow up another one on his next turn anyways. With so much opportunity for these constructs to break, Captain Cosby needs a way to bring them back. This is where unflagging animation comes into play. For the price of 1 point of psychic damage per turn, the equivalent of a small migraine, Cosmic can bring one construct back into play from his discard every turn. This is the easiest way to effectively keep him supplied with constructs. Next on the list is Knife, the former filter agent whose favorite things include drinking, traveling, and punching people. She behaves a lot like Ra, who I talked about in the previous episode, in that she is the soul of simplicity. She punches hard right out of the gate, and who cares about setup? The cards I have chosen are the Focus and Conduit Blade, the Prototype Servo Gauntlet, Kinetic Neutralizer, and For the Greater Good. I placed both the Focus and Conduit Blade and the Prototype Servo Gauntlet, why does Filter love their big words? Because their primary purpose is to increase damage. She can use her Focus Blade for her energy attacks, the Gauntlet for her melee attacks, and she frequently uses both of them at the same time. Another prominent card for her is Kinetic Neutralizer. This one is also simple and fun. Whenever Knife attacks the villain with the most hit points, she gets a damage boost. This leads her to focus fire on the main bad guy, as that will put them down quicker. However, the thing that separates Knife from other minimalist setup damage dealers is her ability to play a bunch of cards or use a bunch of powers at once. 
I could choose Overdo It or Battlefield Experience, but I will use For the Greater Good, as it also illustrates another tendency for Knife. This card allows Knife an additional card draw, card play, and power use, but it does come at the cost of 3 psychic damage. Knife is very good at beating things up, including herself. It's really up to the player whether to go all out and get her wrecked, or play it safe and do marginal amounts of damage. My opinion? Go big, or go home. Speaking of going big, we have Skyscraper. She's a Therathian of the Redskin variety, meaning that she has superhuman, super alien? Abilities of her own, in her case, size changing abilities. Her distinguished cards are Proportionist, Therathian Monolith, Linking Incursion, Emergency Evac, and Explosive Reveal. Proportionist is a good card to help state the whole point of Skyscraper's deck, her ability to change size. She has three different sizes and thus three different roles in a hero team, and she can switch between them. Proportionist takes advantage of her size changes, either letting her draw a card when she shrinks or letting her attack all targets when she grows. When Skyscraper decides to be as large as her namesake, then she packs quite a punch, but she has a bit of a problem with collateral damage. Therathian Monolith is an excellent way to counter her damage that she might cause her friends by redirecting all damage dealt to them to her, allowing her to protect the team. Linking Incursion allows Skyscraper to do one of the things she does best. She goes tiny and plays the Saboteur, and drops a bunch of devices on the field, devices that can cause villains to weaken, fall apart, or attack each other. Playing with these links can cause some mayhem on the field without Skyscraper having to show herself. I place Emergency Evac and Explosive Reveal together, as they both feel like payoff after preparation. Evac is used for a bit of healing, destroying some villain ongoings, and completely clearing the environment away. Explosive Reveal blows up placed links for a decent amount of damage. Both shift her to her normal size, and thus allow her to do some more preparations in her power phase. And last on our list is Lifeline. Former villain and mass murderer, current angsty hero, full-time edgelord. If you intend to play Lifeline, then there is one thing you have to do. Embrace martyrdom! Almost everything he does involves self-mutilation in order to power his blood magic. His cards are Terminarch's Casing, Cosmic Immolation, Calculated Action, and Haunted Memories. Terminarch's Casing is a gift to Lifeline from Yansa Videro, the Terminarch of the Enclave of the Endlings. It is an equipment that reduces damage dealt to Lifeline from all sources by one, including himself, and gives him the opportunity once per turn to either deal some damage or heal a bit. Aww, it's almost like she knows him. Now that we have talked about a way of keeping Lifeline alive, let's go back to embracing martyrdom with his next card. Cosmic Immolation is an ongoing card that increases all damage dealt by Lifeline to all non-hero targets, but also increases damage dealt to Lifeline, all by a factor of 2. He's allowing himself to get way burned out in order to obliterate some bad guys. Also. You know how this effect is similar to the effect of Termination Absolute Zero's power? Well, Lifeline thinks he's a wuss because Lifeline can play two copies of Cosmic Emulation at the same time. So he can give and receive plus four damage in all instances. Anyone else think Lifeline might be a little suicidal? One thing Lifeline does well is draw cards and stack his hand with stuff he needs. Cards like Calculated Action can hugely speed up his card draw, or allow him extra card plays, and Haunting Memories allows him to take cards from the trash to use later. Both of these cards come at the cost of hit points, but it can be well worth it to get his best cards. Using Calculated Action can even allow Lifeline to chain actions, get more cards and play another card to combo off of that. And with that, we come back to Earth. I hope you have enjoyed this list, feel free to leave a like, and I will see you again. Bye friends!